Hi everyone, it's Henry here and welcome to this special episode of Culture of Paint. It is the award show for the MPO Online 2023. Joining me is head judge Andrew Wardle. My fault, my Ma- Mal name. insert loads of cheers and applause and all the rest of it now. Am I getting told off? All the, all the airphones. Um, and tech guru co-conspirator all-round fabulous person matthew avis how you doing chaps you good you well very very happy yep. to be doing this i think glad you both read the memo about dressing up for it so we're gonna go well. into I'm dressed up yeah beautiful on brand um you're so the host yeah, buddy it's it's over the uh the, the competition is over for this year we brought it back for 2023 it's going to be annual from now on and we were thinking oh do you know if we get over 500 entries that'd be pretty sweet that'd be that'd be you know people still got a bit of an appetite for it and obviously it went bananas um so the judging team have been working feverishly now for a couple of weeks but it's all done it's all uh it's all categorized it's all people have moved things around a million different times i'm really sorry if your thing isn't where you thought it should be there's bound to be something that slipped through but we tried our very very best uh, with all of that um but i suppose that's one of the challenges right of an online competition uh, is the fact that you can't just pick the minis up and and move them and and look at them and all the rest of it um yeah. so yeah li- limit i suppose it's, it's i suppose it's worth addressing that so the the what did we want from it so that uh, the online competition this is very much a celebration of what we've all been doing for the past 12 months there's miniatures that you're really, really proud of that you want to share with a community, you know, of mega, mega paint nerds uh, that we are. Um, and just, yeah, just show it off and share it and enjoy. And a truly global community, which is, the, I think, the biggest advantage, right, the online comp. There's no barriers to entry, is there, other than if you could take a photo, which 99% of people could take a photo of a miniature, which is great. Um, you know. That there may have been somewhere a better photo might have. Well, we'll talk about that well, later. Specifically, are you going to do it later? Right? Okay, right. Yeah, I, def- <laughs> I, def- I think um, you know online competitions are, are interesting, and there's obviously some drawbacks. And and overall, miniatures are three D, so it's nice to judge them in three D. But the point of an online contest really is to just yeah just celebrate the year and show off some minis. And I like doing it this time of year as well, Christmas. Um, and you know, not everyone can afford to go to places. So, um, regardless of the drawbacks, I think an online competition is something really, really nice. And we can just chat about minis and show some good stuff. And we've done our best judging to, uh, yeah, just kind of celebrate everyone's work for this year, but also make it a competition uh, that you'd be proud to win. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. It's really nice because, you know, I'm really looking forward to doing our very own competition uh, in person, which we'll talk about at we'll some point. A little bit. Yep, we will. We'll definitely but get to that. I'm sure there's a lot of people that couldn't come to that. And uh, yeah, this is really, really cool. So I would like to say, because um, we'll be speaking to the other guest judges, Will Hahn and Dave Colwell, uh, they worked so hard. So next time they post a picture on Instagram, uh, say thanks <laughs> because uh they got paid nothing um yeah. they had no they had no reason to do it other than you know and it's a bit cheesy but it really is giving back to the community and i i say that because the hours they put in um i think dave put in 20 hours and will probably did about 15 i did something similar so they put in a ton of time and it was a lot of a lot of work um and i really enjoyed doing it with those guys and yeah i just really appreciated their time so yeah if you uh if you ever speak to them and you entered this competition then uh, give them a thanks because uh yeah it really is a lot of work to judge 2000 minis it is <laughs> so, and if you're yeah, not happy you with lot. your award then those two are the ones to get in touch with <laughs> uh, directly not via cult of pain um so Let's have a look. You're telling me 2,000 people. Matt, stats. Let's have a look. Come on. Because it's pretty impressive. You know, let's Let's get into it, shall we? That attack, right? Loving this. There you go. This is is Matt's dream. Right? (laughs) 
I don't know, the spreadsheet really killed me this time. <laughs> I'm, I'm having it all automated. Well, I mean, that's worth saying as well, right? You know, we we've we we are we are finding our feet with this as much as as anyone, and we've got a ton of different things that we want to do for next year's as well. So we are we are learning, but it's not for lack of effort, is what I will say. Um, so yeah, those numbers are pretty pretty bonkers. Um, like we we didn't think we get this many, especially with the last competition where we allowed people to enter three times into one category. You know, like a body of work mm. and all the rest of it. I really wasn't expecting. Um, this. Any of those sort of stand out to you as being a bit of a surprise? In terms of volume, low or high, or I mean, either or, either or. Uh, I, do you want me to just go into some random thoughts about about it? Treat yourself. I'd, well, I'd say standard single figure was the hardest category to judge, um, and uh, I'm sure the other guys uh, will agree. We'll, we'll ask them that later when they're on. But yeah, we had 428 entries in that. And, you know, standard's difficult because you're trying to be um, generous and uh, encouraging, but you also like I said, you want it to be something that you're proud of to achieve. So trying to balance it, not being a participation award, but not being too ruthless mm. is, is quite difficult when it comes to standard. And we really took a long time. And this is, this is one of the big positives of an online comp because you can't see them in real life, but we had more time. And I found going through all the entries, placing them where I thought they could go and having the chance to come back to them the next day and, and I did standard over probably a week because it's not until you've looked at everything a few times that you really know um, where everything is. And, you know, we ended up having quite a few awards um, and then we sort of filtered and, and chipped away at it like that. So it was really nice to have time to adjust it. But yeah, standard was really, really difficult. Um, I don't mind saying that there were more awards in standard at one point. And we had a really big discussion about what we want the competition to stand for. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just think it's, that's really important. But yeah, stand, standard was difficult. And I would say anyone watching, the most important thing if you enter an online competition again is the photos. And a lot of stuff we were like, we think this is good, but we simply can't see it. Um, and try and get your photo done early because then you could get feedback on the photography alone. But, you know, the correct lighting being in focus and you don't you really don't need special kit you can have a piece of paper a phone a light but you do have to take your time um and you know just having your, your room in the background and some other stuff your washing machine it doesn't it doesn't help uh in giving you a chance of getting the trophy so but yeah i think yeah standard was was crazy but very very cool to see a lot of people uh entering that it was and it, it was a, it was a pleasure going through it all i mean you know every pe people there's there's a lot of responsibility isn't there with this you know but people have decided to trust you with their work that you're gonna respect it give it its due and the rest of it and, and i know that every single one of these entries was viewed multiple times it was given its due categorized recategorized other people came in we did more cuts we did this that and the other you know every every single award has been I don't want to say argued over, but it's certainly every single award has been considered and signed off by at least three judges. You know, this is some, um, yeah, I, I think it took us a little longer than we wanted it to, but mm. in hindsight, I don't really think it can, I don't really think there's a need to do it quicker. As you said, Andy, you can take advantage of that online element, right? Where it was nice to do a sort of cut and then come back a day or so later, go back through it and go, oh, do you know what? That one was playing on my mind or, oh, what was I thinking here? And it's that and the other. So, yeah, it was, uh, but but the the standard single was pretty crazy. Trying to keep four hundred odd entries in your head, right, as you're going through for the for the cuts and, and so forth. Um, and That's it was, it. Uh, yeah. And then especially certain, there were certain models. I don't know if we got the stats on them, but there were certain models featured quite heavily. And you'd be like, mm. oh, have I have I seen that slam before? Have I seen that one, that Mortarian, that Gilliman? Um, I didn't have anything to do with Masters, but I did. I did enjoy seeing the the popular miniatures for for standard for sure. Um, what I hope yeah. um, people can see when when we've judged it is there should be a clear division between gold, silver, and bronze, and that's one thing I uh, that's one thing I'm quite proud of is I do think it's quite clear that you can see that the steps. 
uh, and, you know, the increments you got to take. And for those that don't get something today, then, you know, try not to be disappointed. Have a look what got bronze and what, you know, you think is different to yours. And I think, I think everything in bronze is, is pretty damn good, you know. Um, so a lot of people were insanely close and we really did discuss things that were on the cusp. We discussed for quite a long time. Um, and we really did take care when something was like, I think this is nearly bronze. And we would just really chat it through to be like, we think it's not because of this reason. And, you know, if there's a key area for someone to work on, to elevate their stuff, then it's important, I think, um, just to keep them motivated, you know? So yeah, just have a look at what's won and try and aim for that and try not to be discouraged if you don't get anything this time round. But like we said, we want it to be something to be proud of. Um, so that's why we judged harshly overall, I would say. That's it. And everything's still up on this wonderful gallery that Matt's created, you know, so you can go back and see everything. We'll do a winner's gallery as well, but everything will stay up there. So, you know, you can be proud to have been part of this thing. Speaking of uh, awards, uh, we will be sending out to all the winners a little, I don't know what you call it, Matt, what do you call it when it's like a digital thingy sticker? Mm, like a lower third something? Call it one of them. Anyway, <laughs> a little thing to stick on the photo of your entry so you can post on your socials that will tell you what your award was and we'll be sending physical awards out to all of the gold winners from both standard and master something we're going to look at next year is either some sponsorship or some tip jars or whatnot, some some way we can potentially fund physical awards for everybody um but uh yeah that'll that'll come further down further down the line and stuff um so i think that's probably enough chatting for now i'm sure we'll go back yep. to stats maybe when we get the judges on as well and guys with regards to feedback we aren't gonna be able to give people individual feedbacks please don't ask for it because it's quite awkward having to say no which we don't do very often um but what we're going to make sure we do is all of the judges going to have a little chat later and sort of give you a couple of top tips that they've uh, they think could really help anyone elevate uh, what they entered uh, not just take a better photo because doesn't need to be an amazing photo right just to be able to just needs to be in focus and you can, you can see uh, as well um so yeah that's a good chat that's good hands chat. um i don't know the how did the hands didn't bother me as much as when we did it last time <laughs> you know and some people have made kind of a kind of a whole thing about having their hand in the hand in the pit now but yeah, as andy says like piles of washing and stuff not so much uh, but uh, yeah, let's get on to the slides and have a look at the goals. So what we're going to do, guys, is go through all of the goals that were in uh, standard. Then we're going to go through all the goals that were in masters. And then after we've had a chat with the other judges, at the end of this video, we're going to have every single winner's name displayed uh, on the screen. So you'll be able to see uh, what's going on. Otherwise, we'd be sat here forever. Um, and also, I'm not going to try and pronounce people's names because I'm used to sat it. I might have a go. Yep. <laughs> we'll see. I'll drink a bit more beer. It'd be all right. All right. Let's open it up. What's up first? So, standard single figure. Yeah, this is um, this is what I was talking about. And I think all of these figures are really, really excellent. And the standard class is there for those slightly newer or you know not feeling quite ready for master. But these these winners in in single figure. Uh, they're all really, really great. Um, I think a favorite from all of the judges was the scout sergeant there. Um, and that that miniature did set quite a good level for, for standard. Um, Killed a dreadnought as well, that lad. Yeah. Killed a chaos but dreadnought. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, these, these, these are great. And if you're going for the standard level, um, have a look at these golds. Have a look at, you know, everything, the silver, the bronzes, but... Mm -hmm. Um, this is a this is a really fantastic level, and uh, I would say all of these guys are probably ready to give uh, masters a go for sure. And what makes you say that? Um, there's 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 elements of all of these figures that are really really excellent. The um, the the squig, if you if you look at um, a close up of the face, we're all super impressed by the the finish on that and. Um, yeah, the finish on that is ready for for a top level. Uh, the color composition of the croup um, is really beautiful. It's so nice. The the choice of colors that's what really pushed that one through. Um, 
yeah, just all of these are very nicely presented and, and yeah. look at the photo look at the photography as well. It's all cropped very, very tight to the miniatures filling the photo. Mm. Um nice colored background, either black or gray. Um so yeah, this is this this helps in a photo competition like this. But yeah, well done to all these guys. We uh we love them all. Clear winners. Yeah, big time. And just the group, I'm telling you, mate, that kit just gets better and better. Um, the more, the more I'm seeing of it, right? Yeah, so anyway. But big them. shout, my favorite to see that old school war, war boss in there. Yeah. That's, a, that's a thrill. Um, yeah, look at him, not looking out of place at all next to all those uh, wonderful uh, plastic kits. I think they're all plastic, aren't they? Yeah, all those plastic kits on there. So, yeah, it what's, didn't, actually. what's next category, Matt? Unit. Often my favorite, and I possibly definitely one of my top threes in the whole comp was in this one mm, yeah there's some Ooh, there's me. some really there's yeah. some really nice units uh in this show um at the corn unit i would say was, is probably the the standout unit and we really liked how the the skin was rendered and even when it comes to photography how we you know place the obviously lead a kind of dude at the front and uh, put the other two nice and tight next to him just yeah nice photo again nice painting really really showed them off um and uh yeah all of these are great and they're all very different as well um mm. actually seeing the different styles of photos you know you've got sean's uh zombies with kind of the gray background actually looks really nice with those the old school faded blue for the orcs black uh you know, all these different backgrounds, actually, you know, photography is something you can change the look of your piece and you can see it here in the squads. Uh, really, really nice base on the Sisters Repentia, actually. Mm. That that level of presentation and, and particularly good integration uh, is what made that stand out. And there wasn't uh, very many pieces that had uh, integration of the bases quite as good as that. So that was that was really excellent. But yeah, you yeah. can see this is this is the standard level. Uh, and these are all very, very nice looking units. It was. And it was a nice interpretation as well by Corentin to to put this in unit. Um, yes. Because when we first saw it, we were like, oh, hang on, what's this? So then you're like, well, actually, that does fit the brief. And I there's no reason for it. There does no reason for it not to be, uh, you know, in, in there like that. So, uh, again, it's just it's just so nice to see different figures from different manufacturers all together. It's one of the reasons I like that paint cult is hashtag so much it's, it's just the variety and really this was almost just the best of the best wasn't it of the, of the year from from paint cultists you know just that that variety and as you see i think unit these five entries do typify how gold standard is not one style of painting it's not one type of thing right it is all you know is all these nebulous elements coming together as well as being able to color in really really well um, but yeah the orc unit are just yeah the faces on those a lot are of all love. Yeah. excellent and yeah. there's you know however many is it 20 of them and every yeah, face right. is is really excellent and that's what made that a clear gold um yeah just really really good i love those yeah these old time. school models with modern paint jobs you know they're not kind of falling behind um no, I think and that's it's a, a nice it's thing. a funny era as well right because it's it's not old but it is certainly not new anymore those sculpts you know they are previous sculpts they are you know so it's yeah it's it's quite exciting especially with the old world coming back and we're going to see sculpts of this era like to see how good you can make them look i think it's quite yeah, it's quite exciting um right nice. what's up next matt next is oh mm. rich's favorite sorry he's not here tonight yeah the vehicle category I believe this. I, th I think this tank placed alongside Rich. Actually, I think it's the one from Golden D. Yeah, from GD this year. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think it is certainly yeah. similar. Uh, yeah, the, these are excellent. Um, just all really good weathering. A lot of detail um, in the vehicles. We looked for a lot of care, and I think one thing, if you didn't win in vehicle, one thing we noticed was some things like the metals people left a, a, a little basic and put a lot of time into maybe the armor but then all the other elements not so much whereas these three had um the details done 
over every single part and the weathering was consistent things like the metallics on the space Wolf dreadnought they're all highlighted really really nicely whereas some of the other vehicles maybe they just kept the metals a little simple which is fine but this is what elevates to a gold really i think all of these three had good basing um all the details were the same level as the normal armor and the weathering uh was good realistic and and to an even standard across them all so that's what's common with these three yeah it did what you were saying then really did stand out quite a lot in standard was that i don't know whether it was that people had more confidence in one area you know whether that was metals cloth faces whatever like that but but particularly metallics like there would be yeah. there would be things painted really really well and, and i think if anything that made it even more stark when the metals did look just metallic paint and a wash kind of thing and i think there's this there may well be an element of i think many things in standard are from people's gaming collections um, yep. They're very, very well done, and they're the pieces those people are most proud of. But they weren't necessarily painted to, to you know, for a competition. Um, so that was that was something I think sort of it was always at the back of my mind when I was looking at things when we were when, when we were going through them. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you can't fault these three, and I guess that's it, right? You can't fault them, and that's when you go, well, it's it's gold then. Uh, yeah. You know, even like some stuffs. Oh my goodness me! Straight through, you're it. And then other ones, mm -hmm. you sort of sit there for a little longer, won't you? And just be like, well, there's absolutely nothing to pick at. Um, and it's uh, yeah, really, really lovely. Um, and on the uh, gallery, if people, when they've done their submissions, have entered their social media, then when you click on the, is it the name or the picture, Matt? I can't remember. Uh, it's the the name. Yeah. The name. Then you you will. It's a direct link, isn't it, to their yeah. To their social media, to whatever social media link they gave. Yeah, the link they gave. So that's uh, hopefully you guys will be able to use the gallery as well as, as a good opportunity to find some new uh, accounts to follow. So, what's after vehicle or war machine? Indeed, it's the. Uh, mm. It's a good category, right? It's yeah. it's it is a. They're just big bloody models, right? When it's monsters, so you you got to put some work in, haven't you, to make a. A really, really good looking like monster paint job. Had a lot um, of miniatures not from Games Workshop in this category, yeah. which is noticeable. And you could see just one, you know, most of the stuff in this competition is Games Workshop, which is great. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, of non Games Workshop things. Um, and yeah, the the Hulk, the the skin is just really, really well painted. Um, mm. Some some things you might be saying, oh, why wasn't that in, in another category, like single figure or something like that? Uh, and we we tried to, unless we really think it should be moved, we kind of went with what people entered it into because there is some ambiguity of of which category some miniatures could be in. So we tried to just make it, you know, beneficial for you guys. Didn't try and catch you out with those moving of categories. Um, and always, yeah, we didn't try to screw you over, basically. <laughs> yeah, tried that's to, fair. Yeah. We only moved people for it to benefit them, I think. Um, that's it. Unless mm. unless they unless they put a tank in single figure and really not done a, <laughs> not done well, but uh, but yeah, yeah, really, yeah. So really if, great. if you do if you do look back through and you think oh maybe there's some slight inconsistencies between things like just get over it, don't worry about it. We're, like it's you know every, as Andy says, everything was done from the most positive and kind approach we could take uh, to, to, to doing this. There there was not a lot of ruthlessness. Uh, when it came to any of this hence why it took three weeks to do the judging so yeah um and you know if david been head judge you'd, you'd all be going home with with all <laughs> platinums <laughs> maybe um yeah he's he's i'll tell you what you want dave as a mate at christmas I'm telling you i reckon he's banging gifts um but anyway uh so next monsters one. into large scale and bust so more big things, but slightly differently big things. Uh, these these four are really, really good. Proper um, high level in it. Like this is the, straight through you go. I, a lot of these, um, 
for sure could could have gone in the Masters. And I think if you've not entered competition before, that's what standards for. But if you're watching this, then you, yeah, you guys are all really, really good uh, and definitely ready for Masters. But well done for entering in standard. Um, that's kind of what it's for. I think it's about going in at one level and you gauge where you're at. And if you're you're smashing standard with a gold. Um, and yeah, then you're you're absolutely uh, ready for it. This black crow orc uh, is really really great. I love the presentation. Um, we see a lot of backdrops these days. Sometimes, you know, they they add to the figure. Sometimes they take away. But this one was really really nice for that icy environment. So yeah, I definitely say it's my favourite of the category. Well, also, uh, there was only only one miniature, I think that we uh, moved from standard into master and we felt that it was so, so strong that we did move it all the way from uh, standard straight to silver actually in master, which was really, really cool. Um, nice. But we were actually, we were quite pleased with that. We thought, you know, they're never going to be annoyed about getting moved and jumping all the way into silver. And yeah, we only did that with one miniature because we felt quite strongly about it. Um, you know, some of these figures we could have, but we thought, yeah, this is just solid golds. Uh, and they're, yeah, they're all excellent. So happy with that. Nice. Okay, so that was large scale and bus. And I think maybe the highest quality category and standard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. I'd say so, yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. It was, uh, yeah, it was pretty full on. Uh, right. So it's a couple more categories, isn't there? I think, including mm -hmm. the best one, obviously. Uh, what's up next, Matt? Love this Stop category. Sure. Love this guy. And there were some absolute belters. Like the so, pe yeah. people are good. Mm. Yes. So not a lot of entries in in sculpting overall, but what was there was was excellent. And um I think to be honest, most things entered picked up awards because everything was really, really good in this in the sculpting. <laughs> it's kind of mm. like if you're into sculpting, you're good at it. So uh, that was really cool. Uh, and there's still some traditional stuff as well. You know, people are getting amazing at the 3D, um, but there was still some excellent um, traditional stuff in sculpting as well, which is super cool. No, there was. It's a really good account as well. Uh, Gisela. Oh, I don't know. I told you I wasn't going to do names. The Kratos <laughs> sculpt is, uh, yeah, really, really cool account to follow. Um, I had to do a... Uh little reverse google search because i thought it was just a commercial product right <laughs> yeah yeah i yeah. i just was like someone oh someone's just printed it and entered it but nope they actually did do it yeah it's pretty cool man and i do think there's uh, like you're saying there's although people are getting for, for, oh say people cad is a lot more uh, uh approachable now isn't it it's, it's, it's mm. a lot more more doable uh you know as, as, a, as an amateur but i think that that next level where you you're not just banging out your knockoff arm print on your cheap 200 pound printer you know you're actually getting stuff you know printed to the yeah. to the highest quality you can i think that's probably where that separation comes isn't it there's that sort of sculpting for fun and there's sort of sculpting yeah where you are cl clearly aiming to become mm. you know some something of a, an artist with it um, and uh, yeah it's just just love it like it's just, I, I think traditional art needs to be a category for us soon. We've talked about it before, um, but uh, yeah, I'm really, really glad we've had sculpturing in, in both these years, and we'll, we will absolutely yeah. uh, continue to uh, to support it. As well. So, next one, come on, is it is it the one? Oh. The yeah. hardest category to cut anything in. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's heartbreaking. Too nice. <laughs> Absolutely heartbreaking doing some yeah. of those some of those cuts. Um but I was I was over the moon by by how many people were entering uh critters both in, in standard and masters and, and how many people were entering the critter on its own. You know, there were a few where it was, you know, featured on a on a model with something else, which was great, you know, really fun. But there was a lot of people doing them as as standalone things uh, and some really, really creative uh beautiful little sort of vignettes using these uh mm. using these critters um but yeah considering this guy is about the size of your pinky fingernail 
It's not a bad paint job, is it? It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's the wooden sword for me. And the base is excellent. Just insane. And for that size. I just I just love it. I just love it. Like I, I I thought it would be a fun category and I'm not disappointed. Might have to fight to keep it permanent, but uh but yeah, <laughs> we'll uh we'll we'll I like see. the guest I like the guest category. It's, yeah, it's me cool. Too. Me too. Uh, well, guess we'll just have that best of critter right for next year. Exactly. <laughs> so, were there any more? I'm sure I'm forgetting one category. One more. Of course, the new one for this year, not the guest one, the one that will be in there going forwards. And I'm glad we did include it um, because, particularly, Celebration Brew, that's that just gives me mm. big, big, like early noughties GD vibes like that. It's just, yeah, I just love it. A lot of care into that. So that much care. Base. Yeah. Really, really nice. And that's what we're looking for a lot of is is, is care in, in in every area. And uh, yeah, I think that's what that diorama sh shows. Just every that's little it. part. And then Jonathan uh, Jonathan nailing that sort of the box cover coming alive Ryzen, right? thing yeah. that, that's really popular at the moment. Um, there was there was a number of entries in this style, wasn't there, with the frame and, and all the rest of it. But this was uh, this was a good step above uh, a lot of what we saw. Yeah, and... it's cool. Well, I actually really like that artwork from Leviathan, so it's cool to see that uh, done so well. Absolutely. So that is our standard golds. As you say, all the other winners from those categories will be displayed uh, at the end of the video. And now into the Masters category. So just before we jump into the actual miniatures themselves, Andy, sort of in a nutshell, what are people doing to consider themselves entering into the Masters category? What is it, is it previous competition winners? Is it see where you're at? What's the sort of thing? Yeah, I think that the the concept of standard and master different level is new to a lot of people, especially if you're, um, you've only done Golden Demon or you're only familiar with that. Um, but the whole point of these levels is that if you're you're slightly less confident or you're newer to painting or you just feel, you know, that standards more comfortable for you, that's what that's there for. And the, the whole point is that you can enter something at a slightly lower level uh, and then you've got more chance of getting something, but it actually gauges where you're at. So, you know, if you enter standard, you get nothing. You keep going until you do. If you get a silver, then you're like, okay, I'll keep in standard for, for next time. And if you're in gold, then maybe you look at getting into masters. But at the same time, uh, if you just want to get judged up against the best stuff, then go straight for masters. Um, but there were a few questions like, if I've won an award at this show before, do I have to enter masters? Mm. And no, absolutely not. Because you could have won a golden demon young bloods 20 years ago and not painted since then. So okay. it's you know see that like oh I have to do masters don't I and there's 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 no have to, um, but obviously if you can win in masters it's probably something to be um, more proud of. So yeah, I really like doing the level system. Yeah. Um, you know uh, we talk about golden demon because it's it's the most popular competition, but people often say oh there should be a separate one for professionals or something like something along those lines. And, and that's what having different levels is, is so great. Uh, but you'll see uh, the winners in master are very, very good. And, <laughs> and there's, there's, there's fewer of them. And um, we were looking for a lot of positives. So we tried to, we tried to judge on merits and to win in Marcy, you had to have a lot of good things, nice competition, nice colors, nice lighting. We, you know, if you had a lot of these positives, then uh, you were going to shoot straight to the top. And well, I mean, a hell of one to kick us off with. Yeah. Um, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go with Michael. Um, I just, mate, like, like this one, I think was in conversation as well when it came to sort of overall favorites as well wasn't it from from the entire comp um, yeah absolutely it's um we actually we discussed is it grimdark don't know yeah um uh, but we so you know we did we did think about that briefly but you know there's so much detail in this and it's very very subtle um i think for me one of the standout parts is the the gun nozzle or the the barrel whatever the end of the gun 
What's that called? Mm. It's just <laughs> yeah, barrel. I think you're right. Yeah, it's just unbelievable the the care into something insignificant, and that that is what can elevate a lot of pieces. And like we said, you know, sometimes people were skimping out on certain details, but if you put loads of detail into parts like this, then it's gonna gonna push you to the top. But there's a lot of texture painted on the skin, very subtle freehand on uh, the cloth lovely textures on the leather parts and yeah i think the base is really really simple but complements the mini right it's, it's got it's such great. a beautiful atmosphere hasn't it like as, as a piece yeah. this it's 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 outstanding um yeah you it's, know, not, as, as it's a, not it's not flashy either right no it's, it's not, not right it's really no. tasteful like it, it's just it's everything good about I think 40k as a setting and as a, as a subject for producing artwork in, you know, I, I think this this is just exemplifies all all, all of that. Um, this this paint job's just yeah, yeah, just beautiful. Right, unit next. I can't remember these things, but I'm guessing unit. is for very oh, strong. Loads of models painted amazingly. Yeah, really, really, really good. Um, and you'll see in in different categories we're looking for different things and you'll notice the consistency in these golds is the the presentations um one is a backdrop one doesn't um but they're all very well presented and this isn't saying you have to do an integrated base uh all of these one because the the miniatures on the base are painted to a very very high level but there's also the added care that they've put into presenting uh their minis and uh yeah these are all very different styles as well actually but um yeah just just excellent love them all yeah big time it was nice to see that deathcore uh one at gd this year which was in the uk uh, really 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 sort of eye-catching piece considering how sort of muted it all is um, just yeah lovely lovely composition um right what's after unit Oh, vehicle. vehicle and war machine. We did have some yeah. war machines. Yeah. And we also had some vehicles that were not remotely military, such as this uh, this poor little motor on the left. Yeah. Um, these are both excellent and super, super different. Uh, the Ultramarine Dreadnought is really, really detailed. And uh, you zoom in and, and look at all the attention on all of the, the blue and everything. It was, yeah, it was a real standout, actually, the um, the Ultramarine Dreadnought. Um, and Roman's Roman's entry is just, just wonderful. Um, and it's kind of cool to see, you know, Ultramarines are the, the poster boys for 40K. So we've got, you know, the, the poster boy mini painted absolutely amazingly and then something completely different um, to represent you know what you can do in a competition like this and and what you can do in an open competition where any manufacturers allowed and um yeah we're just looking for well-paying vehicles even though these are very different styles uh you can see they're both top tier in this category of uh vehicle that's it hence why we're having tractors as its own category uh, for <laughs> that could be the guest category time, if right? you yeah. want dude telling you mate best best tractor best tractor uh... it's, where, it's where it's at um right what's well, after vehicles and war machines Matt? i know you might guys might feel like we're whizzing through things that's certainly not our intentions with any of this we just want to there's a lot keep, keep, keep the energy up on the show and as i said you know these these will be up on the gallery for as long as we have the gallery which is for the foreseeable um so uh yeah into monster and one of my favorite minis of the last year i'm so happy it's got a lovely paint job and, and done well as well uh old sluggy uh just yeah love it love think, love yeah. love this is one of those ones where you might have put it in critter you could have put it in large scale but sure. they they've chosen to put it in monster and we we were we were happy with that but that's just a good example of it and it's amazingly well painted and i think it would have been a gold whichever category it kind of went in so that's yeah. why it doesn't matter it doesn't matter too much um and but tim's dragon is just uh, what i mean too. what on earth that dragon yeah like, how <laughs> big is that thing well i think the figure's a 32 mil figure it's the dude ludicrous. right it's absolutely lewd like how do you paint it 
Well, but you, very had, you detailed. had enough trouble doing Sabat's wings, didn't you? Like, like, yeah. being out here, like, how on earth? Like, and then if it's loads of sub assemblies, like, how are you not destroying it when you're trying to glue it together? Um, it's that just that just blew my mind. This one. Like, I think the uh, the reason the dragon's so good is the overall image works um so the general view is is really clear and nice just how like you know the the wing drops into the shadow but when you zoom in it's super detailed and you know nothing's been lost in the the far view but when you go in you've got lots of color lots of brush marks um and a, a wonderful base as well not skimped out on the base it's all non-metallic on the base there's no metallics to paint on the dragon of course but uh yeah doing all those non-metallics on the base and the stairs so yeah, two two really it's fantastic. It's, just it's worth saying as well, guys, that there was the option with entries. So if you're watching this back and you didn't enter the competition, or you weren't aware of it, there was there was the cover image that you would send in, and that was what's displayed in the gallery. But then there were two additional images that could be submitted, and they were only viewed by the judges. Um, and there were certainly some entries I know that we were going through where those additional images made the difference. Um, so, yes, yeah, certainly worth For taking sure. advantage of uh, if, you, if you are able to. Uh, right, what's that next, Matt? Large scale and bust. Was, was always going to be strong, right? <laughs> in, in, uh, as I said, I think it was the strongest in master, uh, standard, and I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Uh, there was, it, how, what were the stats on it as well for, for Masters, large scale? It's pretty um... well populated, right? Let's go yeah, back it was. It was two oh six. Yeah, oh, no. right. Oh, one one eight. One one eight. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's. You know, we've said it before. People that are really into their painting will often gravitate towards larger scale things and busts, and to give them the opportunity, right? To it's to almost the same as know. single figure though. So you got hundred yeah. hundred thirty single figure and one hundred twenty almost in this. So very little difference yeah um in that and um i'm saying if you're coming at, at this comp from someone who's really only aware of things like golden demon and stuff yeah and perhaps only what citadel produced miniature wise and stuff it's i think it's the the category that's always got the biggest difference um uh, mm. of like my god like what are the, where are those minis from or how do you paint that how's you know and it, it just i know for me seeing the first large scale miniatures that excited me so ones that weren't necessarily like quite dry historical figures which which don't have an interest for me necessarily but seeing things like the black sailors release when it came out and going oh man those those miniatures are incredible and they're you know they're not a gaming miniature right they're they're, they're a larger piece i think it's a uh, it, it's always lovely to hear when people talk about painting their first large scale mini or their first bust after only having been a a sort of gaming miniature painter you you can always yeah, you can it. really see things can't you in them whether they suddenly they've got mm. a bug now um for, for, for when it comes to it um so yeah what about these three pieces they're just yeah real standouts i think you've got to check out the santa bomber um there's like a glow coming from the the keyboard which is like that yellow keyboard uh, and there's like a glow coming through the fingers and i think to be honest, that detail was probably what pushed that into the gold because it was so excellent and unusual. Um, that's super, super cool. Uh, the Majestic is just really, really clear. Um, he's, you know, chosen a light source. It's really obvious what it is. It's a comic book character, and I think the, the painting style works super nice with that. It's not like cell shaded. Um, it's like we see a lot of our miniatures, but it just really fit that character. And then the uh, the Banshee, we think, was one of the most ambitious figures. And, I mean, in terms of lighting situation, uh, you know, use of temperature and uh, a lot of interesting things going on with the Banshee that uh, not a lot of other people tried. So, yeah, mm. three, uh, three, yeah, three ambitious figures, I would say, and well executed as well. So they've tried things that are difficult and they've managed to, to pull them off. That's a, that's a difference. And Matt, when we've got Sculptor underneath the painter, what's going on there? So the when you're entering into the competition, the form allowed you to list who the Sculptor was if you wanted to credit them as well. So some people did. Um, it was just nice to have their name there as well. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean it was uh, a bespoke 
piece we're, we're, we're no. working through. Um, so yeah, um, right. Next sculpture. Oh, I love this one it's so amazing. much. Yeah, yeah. I, I really want to paint it. Actually, I was <laughs> just I, I I spent a lot of time getting to look at it, and I, I saw it all before and. Um, you know, I already liked it, but you know, you sit and you look at it properly to judge it, and um, yeah, it's just great. It's just what's I'd love to see it like, like in person, like mm. I really would. Like, it's ah, it's just perfect, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, it just is. <laughs> just like, oh, yeah, let's see some paint mm. jobs on it because it deserves it. Full mm. of character, full of detail, so much character, so much story. Still mm. fantasy, but just fun, you know, not war. Yeah. So just so so many positive things to say. And, uh, yeah, just a, a real standout in the sculpting category, I think. Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now the one we've all been waiting for, obviously. Oh, okay. Master Crit. Oh, is yourself. That? oh, is it? Oh, sorry. Train yourself, Henry. Sorry. Look, if it was up to me, this... Oh. Um, I'm just going to kick off by saying... This is my personal favorite miniature yep. entered into the show. Yeah. Uh, and, agree. you know, yeah, if if someone said you can take one miniature home and put it on your shelf, it would be this for me. Um, it's just wonderful. I love everything about it. Um, the, the base adds so much. It's just excellent. And it's such a simple mm. base, but that little bit of barbed wire just... I don't know. It, it just does something for me. This I think it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's Robin uh, at winter. It's someone who's very good at this type of thing. This account, if you don't follow them, um, and and this is a real, uh, yeah. Like I, I, yeah. Like I agree with Andy and Fer when we were sort of not jokingly talking about best in shows, but I was like, come on, like, can can we have a, <laughs> a tiny Robin as best of show? Like, is that okay? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was like for me. You know, it's my favorite. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's just just amazing, right? And this shows what you can do in the in the critter category. So um, yeah, Ab absolutely. And that was it. You know, it wasn't it wasn't meant to be a gimmick category. You know, it was it just it felt like critters had momentum behind them. Um, you know, at the moment, and, and I think a lot of that's to do with citadel gw sculpting a lot of them um for mm -hmm. various things but you know loads of other manufacturers make them we've always had them for things like you know D D and, and that type of thing as well and then there's there's a a surprisingly large amount of figures like this little robins little deers little frogs that aren't uh fantastical or anything like that they're just lovely little lovely little sculpts um, so yeah also like on a side note a real thrill to see certain people entering this competition yeah you know? absolutely. it's uh, you. A, a real yeah real good good feeling so um so yeah so that's uh, we could obviously end it there because you know it's probably the greatest thing you're no. going to see but i believe there are some more uh, <laughs> no, equally amazing category. equally amazing miniatures uh, and here we go yeah, so diorama. Um, it's worth noting that we we did allow team entries. Um, so Roman's entry, he had other people collaborate on, and Emil and Lucas um, did this diorama together. Um, but we did decide to allow team entries. I think next time um, this isn't concrete, but we'll probably do a team category. But yeah. for this one, for this one, we just let people as teams, as some of the ones in the the bust were teams, uh, we let those. But I think what we would like to do, certainly for the in person show, uh, but yeah, we'll probably do a team category. But for now, uh, we allowed them and just put them in with the rest. So yeah, like we said before, just trying to be uh, as open and uh, good for people. But uh, yeah. All three of these are mm -hmm. absolutely stellar. Uh, one, I you go. I love loot level one. It's yeah. It, I've seen it around a few times. It's one of my favourites. It's just that it's like looking in an old white dwarf or an old Dungeons and Dragons book, and you just this little drawing in the background, and it's just it's perfect. <laughs> 
it's nice to see the these different scale dioramas because one is is very small and the painting is absolutely exquisite the you know the mm. painting of the skeleton the bone there's so much yeah. love into into that bone best bone, it? Yeah. Best bone ever seen yeah and that's Bottom. that's why that's you know in the in the gold there and then no, the other two are obvious that they're just unbelievable dioramas aren't they I really, I really like the base actually um, on the Manta diorama. I think the trees coming through the Manta and and all of those things are, are really, really great. Uh, I think we we did sort of discuss uh, best base for the Manta, but we we decided that we probably wanted uh, the best ofs to go to individuals, uh, and that's why we will will probably do the the team category uh, mm. separately. But I think that the the best offs it's probably fairest to go just to individuals. But um, that base on the Manta is just incredible. So, like watching it through, like progress through the videos that they put out, just the amount of hours in that thing, and the, like just the amount of effort, the sheer effort to get it together. <laughs> I think the nice Crazy. thing about that as well is I have I haven't seen the the video series, um, and sometimes when you know the background you judge it differently because you could be like yeah but they put loads of time into it so it deserves it but i'm i was looking at it absolutely and i mm -hmm. don't know if it took them two days or two years it's just a gold and it's regardless of, of the effort it's a very very high level um but super cool well, that you can judge. see these things right yeah yeah <laughs> you can't you can't like, think at the background no be too much like oprah just awards everywhere oh the colwell <laughs> school of judging i see well we'll have him on soon to talk, about the, to, to talk about that but you have mentioned best ofs andy and that was a almost a flawless segue is uh, that next into, i think it is is it not yeah here we go best of shows oh. god imagine how good we'd be if we actually prepped um so... this is prep dude come on look at these <laughs> yeah. amazing slides so best of uh best ofs we wanted to do a handful of best ofs for the show uh, ironically, given the title of the slide, we actually chose in the end against doing a best of show. Um, I think the reasoning kind of behind that was that it's not actually a show um, was kind of what it, what it came down to, right? Well, I tell you, I tell you, really, what we thought about is that there was there was some we were deciding between it, and we we kind of thought that it was cooler to have the best ofs and not for the online show not put a waiting behind them so not have this is the best of this and then this best is worth more than that we just wanted to say hey these these bests are they're what they are they're the, they are they're right. the best of this type of thing and also for us uh you know for cult of paint and the miniature painting open there will be a best of show um for the in-person one and we want that to be really really special got some cool ideas that we're trying to get done for for the winner of that and we thought it'd be nicer uh to do it this way um so i'm really happy uh with what we've done for these best ofs so let's go for it first up best of creative yeah so we we talked about this one for ages and um it's just it's kind of simple but it's everything about it's beautiful um and yeah every every judge just absolutely loved this and mm. only positive things to say about it composition atmosphere you know what feelings it uh evokes just uh yeah just really really fantastic absolutely love it and i'm really uh really happy that roman entered that it's really nice to have people like roman enter the into this online show so appreciate that a lot yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with Sarah, is it? I, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's perfect. It's wonderful. Um and as ever, beautifully presented as well. Yeah. Uh, right. We, we we really did love this. Um yeah, we, we talked about it uh, for a long time. Um so yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we would talk about it when we have the other guys on. We might, yeah, we might well do. Uh, right, next best of, number two of four, in no particular order. Uh, so this is best of Grimdark. So the best ofs were taken from across both categories. 
uh, both uh, levels, levels, masters and standard. Um, and it wasn't necessarily like if if there had been something that we thought was the best example of this and it had been a bronze in X, then that means it gets the best of it. This wasn't only chosen from the golds. As Andy said, this is this is just special little recognition awards, I suppose, as opposed to platinums, you know, and that type of mm. that type of thing. Um, and for us, uh, yeah, Grimdark was a category we did uh, in in entirety when for the first uh, MPO, and uh, we decided uh, that was the guest category for this one. It's critters, but we wanted to celebrate Grimdark because it's it's something we all enjoy, you know, as as Warhammer fans and, and, and paying fans. It's it is a style in and of itself. Um, it's, I think, a much broader style than many people give it credit for. Um, and there was there was a good number that we were considering, you know, which, which is this. And, and I think Grimdark is was well, is certainly as much about atmosphere as it is about the painting to to, to a degree. Um, but this person uh, is particularly great proponent uh, of of Grimdark. A really wonderful account to follow. Uh, and this, I think, this figure just sort of encapsulated it, mm-hmm. didn't it? Um, yeah, it's just things like the use of the skin tone, just yeah. really desaturated, um, showing that refrain to not overly, you know, de- put sharp details on it and just just stuff to detract. This just feels super moody, uh, really, really like a, a yeah an artwork uh, from Blanche or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just feels like not happy warhammer <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely feels feels um, brutal yeah and as a big you know big heresy fan and, and as someone who converted this model up years ago for a, a friend of ours like it's yes yeah, lovely to see such a great example of it uh yeah. this character done uh right so up next matt number three best of boost this um we were looking at a bunch of bases actually and I guess we were looking at individual figures and things like that, but then we kind of came back to this one. We're like, this base is so good. It supports what it's on so, so well. And, you know, the, the, the figures come as they are right in a set, like kind of made Mm -hmm. for you, but doing this base, um, you know, making the stairs and using the scenery, um, is just so, so well done. I really think that it elevates the whole thing wonderfully. It's also really, really tight. You know, it's not a massive base. It's just enough to fit the figures on um, and and add to the composition rather than take away. So yeah, Mm. one of the nicest, one of the nicest presentations on the stick integration. It's kind of the, a backdrop, but not a painted backdrop, you know, just the framing of it. Yeah. Only good things to say about this base. I thought it was absolutely excellent. And what a way to elevate this. Um, I can't remember what the, the set of figures is. The March triumph of St. Catherine. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's kind of a ready-made diorama, right? But mm. I think that this, the ba- the painting's excellent, but the, the basing really, really elevates um, the triumph of St. Catherine. So loved yeah. it. Absolutely, one of my one of my favourites of the whole comp. This one easily. Yeah, um, me too. And uh, you can't see it so much in this crop shot, but I I love the fact that it's on a tiny little stick. Stick. Um, I think it just again, it just this idea of it's a snapshot, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, something, it's something really wonderful. Um, yeah, and, it's, and I, I know it's not it's not Blanchett Zoo, but Sisters of Battle, I think. A lot of the the imagery surrounding them and, and how a lot of us see them, uh, Blanche, John Blanche's artwork has a big impact on that. And it's something we've mm. said before about his his bigger pieces is you often wonder what's going on off off camera, as it were, you know, or just to the side of the main action because it's such a good job of suggesting that there's so much more going on around this. And I think they, the person here has done exactly that with this base. It's it's beautifully done, but you, or I certainly am in my mind and picturing the full, the full scene. You know what, what's going on around it, and I think that's it's amazing. That's that's when people nail a miniature, right? When it's when you can get lost, uh, mm. just just by just by looking at it. Um, so yeah, so our last best of is I believe yeah. best of painting. Back yeah. to the busts, yeah, pretty special. So. I didn't try to say too much uh, 
earlier but yeah this this one is one of the the most ambitious in terms of painting uh and i think you'll agree you can just look at it and get the feeling but you know the cold light on the hair and the the warmth in the face there's just so many things to love so this was a a real standout uh and that's why you know we were choosing between a handful uh and we decided we'd rather have this this separation and go well you know this is good because it's really emotional this is good because it's well painted and that's why i really want to um we wanted to go for this award of having just what's the best painting on something you know and uh mm. i really th i really think that that shows it and i hope that people look at the best ofs and really see what we what we tried to do because they are all really different and they're so excellent in different ways you know comparing roman's car to this is actually quite difficult um if you were going to pick one and i think that having these best ofs just shows yeah shows them in their own light and i really i really like that kind of uh, award system so i hope people mm. can see what we try to do and just uh yeah keep it keep it positive and award people that paint good <laughs> basically, <laughs> absolutely. Basically, absolutely basically absolutely so yeah so that's the trip through the golds and the best ofs uh to all those winners massive congratulations we will be in touch with you all uh, over the next few weeks with regards to getting you out a little something to say thank you and well done so it's time for a quick break for us in real time and we will fly in our guest judges uh, and get them up and ready for you so when we come back we'll be joined by dave and will see you shortly Hi, everyone, and welcome back. So joining myself, Andy, and Matt this time are our other two judges, Will and Dave. Hello, chaps. How are you? Doing great, man. Happy Doing to be nice. here. Good. Excellent. So this is a truly international video now. We've got several continents covered. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pretty satisfied with that. But instead, that was one of the reasons we kind of wanted to really lean into that international uh, side of things. Uh, we thought we can't quite afford to fly Will and Dave in to do the in-person competition uh, next year, but you know. I mean, I would have taken you up on it if you offered. But. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, just oh, yeah, I'll just stick it on the stick it on the bill, mate. It'd be fine. Um, but yeah, so we brought these guys in to assist Andy with the judging, uh, and these three fine gentlemen looked at an awful lot of miniatures for an awful lot of hours. Um, and that is how we ended up with uh, the winners that you've just seen on the slides and obviously the ones we're going to talk about in a little bit. But what I thought would be nice, guys, rather than trying to give individual feedback to people and all the rest of it, is to try and perhaps give them a little bit of an insight into what it was you guys were looking for when you came into this uh, situation to, to, you know, criteria for judging, that type of thing. But I think preface it with what did you personally find now you, you've both judged competitions correct will you've judged comps before dave you, yes. i know you have plenty uh -huh. of yeah. so you know you guys know what you're playing out here but possibly not in this way uh before yeah. um so yeah andy just talk us through the team like how did you find it the fact that it's three different time zones you know not physical minis um, all that side of it i really enjoyed the discussion and uh you know these guys are great. And then whenever we got to somewhere where we didn't agree, we discussed why. And sometimes what was really nice is people would say, ah, yeah, but look at this. Have you thought about it like that? And you could actually, you know, change someone's mind because yeah, you're coming at a different point of view. And we always came to a conclusion and there, there were a lot of figures where we were just like, yeah, this is that really quickly. And there were other times where we completely didn't agree at all, um, <laughs> but it was but in a really nice way because you know you just you just take the time, allow everyone to speak, and you come to a, a decision. And sometimes I would feel a certain way about something, but the other two were aligned, and I said, okay, you know, you guys align, and we'll go with that, and and other and you know, other combinations of that. So three three was great because we never. You know, we always had a, uh, if there was a split decision, we always went one way. Um, but yeah, it was just really enjoyable. And I think the, um, you know, sort of the mutual respect for each other's uh, opinions was just a nice place to be. And I I really enjoyed the discussion, uh, just, just going through stuff, really. 
Yeah, what about you, Dave? So I say you, you're you're fairly uh, experienced now when it comes to to judging these painting comps. You've got a lot of involvement, haven't you, in the the scene over in Oz? Um, yeah. And you know, you, you're often it's often a team in those situations as well, right? Yeah. Um, um, what, something what, that yeah. stands out to me is um, how often and how how well we work together. But and so, like Andy said, sometimes we go to a piece and like bang, and that was straight away gold or bang silver and sometimes you can just see where it lies just by looking at it but then it's really fascinating when you come to something and all of a sudden there's a different viewpoint and since we agree so much on so many things and so many things were so smooth when those um ones that come up uh out of nowhere and someone's got a different view it's it's fascinating because you agree so much, but then there's these these few points that are so different. It's, it, it shows that how our viewpoints are all over the place, even though we agree. So I think that shows that the the winners and the ones that we really agreed on were the um, the standouts, and the ones that that we didn't agree on maybe um, didn't end up being the standouts. But yeah, that, that's one thing that stands out to me. Interesting, interesting. What yeah. about you, Will? I mean, I, the, the other guys, you know, hit on the main points. And sure. um, I mean, I, I'd say that probably 90 to 95% of the decisions that were made were relatively unanimous. And then there were a couple that maybe one dissenter. And then there were a few others that we were had wildly, like Andy said, wildly different, <laughs> different opinions on. Um, but and say you the, come in. Say you come into something. Sorry, well, I don't mean to interrupt you. But say, say you're you're, you're you're coming to a piece here, and and let's say Andy and Dave have both said, "Oh yeah, it's all right. I think maybe this is a bronze, but I'm not sure." But you are you are adamant that this thing is at the very least a silver, if not yeah. should be considered for a gold or whatever. When you you're only working off a photo, in some cases one photo, um, but ideally in in other cases, you know, two three photos. How do you how do you argue your point? without it just being i like this you know and you know this is this appeals to me more than it appeals to you guys because it's not as if you can shove the mini in their faces and turn it around mm. and look at it and, and talk to them like that so what 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 can you think of any examples where you were able to sort of sway them or convince them or or make your point clearer there there were a few and i think this kind of comes back down to what andy said about the mutual respect that we all have towards each other and and our viewpoints and the fact that we're all very knowledgeable even though there is some of that subjectivity on certain things that each of us kind of look for or kind of gravitate to um if you really feel that strongly about something you need to be able to argue your case and articulate exactly what that is why it's so stand out and almost every ten single time that that came up from from either of us because i'm pretty sure that there were cases that each one of us did that during this um mm -hmm. we hung back we listened and i think every single one of us at some point we saw it in a, in a different light okay hey that you know that makes sense i i get that i didn't really notice that or you know, maybe we weren't weighting it the same way, uh, different criteria, whether it's, you know, technical or ambiance or creativity. You know, sometimes there are different pieces where one of those aspects might be really stand out and then the subtlety of another one might not be as apparent. And then usually one of us kind of picked that out. Um, and we all just it was such a pleasurable experience to work with both of these guys and i honestly wish i could sit and talk and chat with them more but the reality of it being split between the three time zones very different time zones we pretty much had about a two-hour window <laughs> yeah. each day it was like right when dave was waking up right when andy was going off to sleep and for me it was right in between like where i when i got off of work and like before my kids got home. Yeah. So it kind of, <laughs> we had a little, <laughs> you know, this it's, little it's a little phone phone where, yeah. what's that? We made use of that time well though. Yes, we did. And we had, it was, it was kind of <laughs> great because I mean, it was just every single day. It's like, all right guys, you know, we're down for the call. <laughs> uh, it's I'd so like nice to, to um, hear though, isn't it? So go on Andy. I just like to add to the point before that, 
I think what's really important about judging what makes a good judge is they can justify why something's good. Um, and if if an individual comes to you and said, why did I get this award? I think it's really important that you can say why. And that and that's what uh, Dave and Will were saying is that we when we, we discussed pieces, we had reasons. Um, and this is it's a it's a subjective thing. It's it's painting. It's art. But we were we were trying to be objective in the criteria and and work out where they should sit. So um, I think that's that's really important for any any yeah. judge. They've got to say why this is gold. What are mm -hmm. the things and be precise and, with their words. And not only that, I would probably argue that it's even more important to you know artic in articulating feedback is why didn't I get a certain award? Why didn't I make it to a certain place? Because it's, um, as Dave, Dave mentioned earlier, those standout pieces, for the most part, they were pretty unanimous. You know, we could tell what the standout pieces were, but why wasn't a given piece that's in silver? Why isn't that gold also? Um, so just to further your point, you know. Yeah. No, it's excellent. I think it's worth saying as well that although, you know, you, you three boys were the... Well, the judges for this, Matt needs a huge amount of credit here for putting together this this sort of back end program thing where you were able to go in and, and see all the work and compare opinions and all the rest of it. Um, you know, it's a lot of it goes unseen, and uh, like as someone who was able to wander around and look at everything behind the scenes, as it were, um, yeah, it was it was, it was pretty, pretty incredible. Flick. Like it was so yeah, fair, really, like, really, that's really a lot of work, Matt. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. He's already nice. doing it like yeah. Here. Yeah. Much better doing it that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, just so people know, it wasn't just these three sat online share screen sharing pictures and uh, and, and things we like that. We couldn't have was, done it without Matt's system. You know, like, there. there's so, just no way not. we could do it. Yeah. Um, but, and yeah, I think I saw some. A... So you go, Dave. I, I was just going to say it was a gigantic job, and I, I can't imagine just doing that. You know clicking on a link, opening the, the next image and saying, okay, look at this link and uh, sharing links that way. Without the system, it would have been impossible. There were so many entries. And, yeah, it, it really made things so much smoother. Yeah, and to be able to put things side by side and see yeah. the thumbnails of, of each piece and know exactly which ones that we already looked at and gave closer looks to, it was, it was pretty awesome, Matt. So thank you yeah, for that. Totally. <laughs> Saved us no a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Will, you've spoken about uh, the standouts being being pretty unanimous. Um, I guess we're talking about golds here. You know, best ofs, I guess, then falls into another peculiar category. But I think you know, mm -hmm. we touched on it before we had you guys on, where the, the idea with the best of wasn't necessarily like in a traditional show with the best of, where they are effectively platinum level you know, standouts, it was more celebrating the particular standout example of, a, you know, a, a style That's exactly or, a, right. or a free or whatever, which I, think exactly. is, which I think is really nice. But again, it's it's what I'm more intrigued at and what I I would be as a, as a competitor is those, the ones on the cusp. So the, the broad, and I hope when people look through the awards, they can see, I know me and Andy chatted about this a lot, that yeah. actually when you, you put the golds next to each other and you put the silvers next to each other, you put they belong together. That there isn't one in there that you're like, oh, that's a lot better than the others, or oh, that one's propping that propping that category up. They just looked right together. And again, mm -hmm. because of how Matt had allowed us to do it, you could you could view them, you know, as a set and things like that. But the people that were on the cusp, I think silvers into golds, yeah. Well, we all kind of know where where that goes. Bronzes into silvers, yeah, maybe, maybe. But what about the bronze categories? So that you know the 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 advantage of this online competition was, and the open style of judging was that if there were fifty things that deserved a bronze, then fifty things got a bronze. But how did you go from Dave, where seven hundred and thirty three things deserved a bronze, to <laughs> just just the twenty or so that we actually ended up with? Like, what? How does that happen? How do you how do you be horrible? Right, like when I was looking at critters, I was like, "How do you cut these things?" And you guys were having to do this on every category across all the levels. Um, let's start it with Dave because we'll start it nicely and then we'll end it with Please the do. stuff. All right, so so Dave, you, I know you you were pushing. <laughs> so end, were end you, with Andy. Commended. Yeah, we'll end with Andy. <laughs> don't worry, we're fine. Um, so Dave, yeah, commended. Um, you felt pretty strongly about this, right? Yeah, I, I still feel pretty strongly that there was. A, <laughs> 
a large number of entries, especially in standard, um, that didn't quite make it. And I, as I've as we've cut it down and you've finalised things, I can understand where the line was and um, how we came to those decisions. But I think that there's been an enormous amount of effort around the world put into so many pieces. And if you think that you were pretty close but didn't make it, then you're probably right. Uh, and there's also another factor, which is the photos. So sometimes we would be looking at something and you'd say, oh, geez, this looks like it could be a bronze or a silver, but the photo's not good enough. And so we can't, we can't be sure. So we had to cut a few because of that reason. Um, but finding that line, once, once you've figured out where the line is, um, it's, it's a lot easier to, uh, put things in it, in or not, but yeah, at, the, the final culling that was pretty tough uh but i still really really enjoyed that like, some of the best discussion we had was during that final cut and yeah i, w- I won't keep going on but no no but but i think totally do go on. like this is this is good yeah. this is what i i would want to listen to so so when you say you, you when you found that line you know to to start drawing distinctions you know between things because particularly with things like uh standards uh single miniature hundreds and hundreds of entries um you, you're gonna lose sight of in your mind right of where cutoff points are and stuff like just just winnowing that down must take a ludicrous amount of time so how are you what are these criteria in your mind that you're going into that with you know like that sort of you've been through everything the first time You've settled in, you're relaxed, you've had a cup of tea, you're feeling good about it. What are you now going in with a, a more uh, objective sort of uh, viewpoint? You know, what are those things that are at the forefront of your mind? So something that stands out to me in my mind um, is the, the quality of the basing compared to the painting on the figure. Um, that was quite a... Quite a um, a separator so maybe the figure was painted to the level of a a silver or even gold in some circumstances but the base was just unfortunately just not good enough and so it dragged the mini down far enough to be cut um and there were quite a few examples of that that that's that's something that's really sticks out in my mind is that there are quite a few examples of bases that drag models out of contention um so if i if i was to say one thing in particular to everyone in the competition is that if you if you're gonna um go for some high awards spend a bit more time on the basing and really focus on getting that storytelling and um ambience and and getting the mini to feel like it belongs where it's meant to belong that that stands out to me can i add something dave sure so it's not just the base being, you know, the ambiance or whatnot, the base is still an extension of your piece as a whole. And it's about presenting a standard of care in the piece that you're putting in. So like Dave mm-hmm. said, we had a lot of beautiful, beautifully painted figures that there is a wonderful standard of care and execution of the particular style that they were painting in through the figure, but that was not present in the base. Okay. So that was not that execution didn't fit with the model. And that shows lack of care. Um, you're also, like Dave said, you're, you're, yeah, you're missing, you're missing an opportunity to elevate it with more creative, you know, with ambiance or with storytelling or whatnot. But it's still, I think that the missed opportunities, you might have gone down a level. The lack of standard of care might have taken you out of contention. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, we mentioned it in the in the earlier chat. Um, I wondered if, particularly in the standard level, that you would have a lot of people entering perhaps pieces from their armies or their collections that they're they're really proud of and stuff. But but in some cases, possibly were gaming miniatures, albeit painted very very well. Um, and I yeah, and I did wonder whether the basing, for instance, in that situation could. As, as you said, affected because it's it's not a miniature that hasn't been painted to be judged and displayed necessarily yeah. uh, in a competition. Was that something 
was well, that something can, that you perhaps gave more leeway with in standard and as opposed to masters or we definitely gave more leeway in in standard but you just like you present a standard of care across painting your army whatever standard that is you can still present a standard of care to your basing as well like how many of us have armies that are at least somewhat themed you know we think about where what, what kind of bases we're putting them on and it's different if you're trying to paint it just to play or if you're trying to paint it to present, you know, more of a show army. Um, so I, I think that the opportunity still lays, lies there and uh, it doesn't really matter if it's for gaming or not. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the standards is, is the standard. I think as well, I, I, I said that to you guys while well, judging a few times, um level of care doesn't matter your, on your skill level and you can see through the effort that's gone in and yeah. if you're mate if you're not as good a painter as someone else you can still put your maximum effort into every element and that's something um we saw like if you you've got something and you haven't really painted it that doesn't matter if you're uh, a new painter or you're really really good P try on every bit um and it, it's it's quite obvious when you're sat looking at foe on the areas that um, maybe you forgot about. So even if you are doing something from your army, uh, if you want to enter something like an online competition, maybe just tidying some bits or maybe there's some details that you just base coated as a placeholder, maybe finish them up to the same standard that you can do. But if you've got you know parts of your miniature that are one standard and other parts aren't it's it's always gonna hinder you from going further so no matter your ability then try and do your best on every area of the mini i would yeah. say agree interesting interested so well dave's had base that was one of his first guillotine moments <laughs> uh what about yourself let's let's uh, flip from bronzes now so we've we've made the bronze cuts we're there we've got that first sort of batch of bron bronzes into contention what kind of things are you looking at criteria wise that are keeping things in bronze and potentially making you go hey guys i think we should look at this one a little bit more should this be silver should this be you know whatever um Again, it goes back to the main criteria, overall standard of care and the execution of the particular style. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what your style is. We want to judge you per what you're trying to do. And it should be apparent what you're trying to do. If we have to sit here and try to debate then of what it actually is supposed to be, then you've already failed yourself. Um, I think the things that are elevating pieces to the highest levels are number one is execution and care. Okay. Number two, that little something extra. We're talking about that ambiance, the creativity, the narrative, the storyline, those things that make a model more than just the model, more than just a space Marine. What kind of pushes it towards, art or something special that's what separates it from the pack if you've got every say you've got two minis that are painted the same technically right but one has create like this creative um feeling or storyline or this ambiance to it it's going to push it above it's going to elicit an emotional response where you look at the two and like yeah this is better and that's I'll start kind of articulate that. Maybe I'll let Andy take <laughs> no, it next. <laughs> no, 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 spawn. No, and and these are you know these are these aren't necessarily going to be easy to answer questions, and they may not necessarily have an answer. Mm. But I suppose it's just it's unusual to have three judges of the experience level you lot are at. Who I thought are... our work was done, Henry. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Surprise. <laughs> um, but you've said articulate before, and, and it is. I think it's a key word. You know, you you three are very articulate when it comes to discussing painting you know you are aware of the jargon you know you you, you can speak with a, a a common language when it comes to it and i think it's quite rare to be able to get judges together and kind of grill them uh, on it you know and let's not lose sight of this this is a rapidly evolving uh industry is not the right word but scene you know you yeah. you three guys aren't 
you are the 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 not the the new blood coming through, but you are the next uh, era, age group, whatever you want to call it, of of very very high end artists who are now judging competitions, head judging competitions, things like that. So, and the scene is different to how it was ten years ago, twenty years ago, thirty years ago, whatever. And, and I think it's important to recognise it. And I think it's something that people can get excited about and should perhaps start. It, it's less about ego now, right? We no longer just have to have star names as judges, and that makes the thing good. Yeah. Judging mm -hmm. is hugely important. There is a massive amount of responsibility. These these are people that have put their their work that they've poured their time into, and have gone okay be horrible like you know like here's my thing judge me on it um now that's that's a huge like amount of responsibility for someone that i think anyway uh, uh to give you um hence why i think dave just for sure to give everybody i mean awards. we we get it because we've all been through it right we've all been on the other side hmm. you know we know hmm. what it's like to go to a competition like that and do exactly what you just said so so with that in mind then how did that influence how did your past experiences as a competitor influence you in this judging situation was there a particular to, standout to me at all of us. yeah no you, you go you're, <laughs> you're in the hot seat right now <laughs> um, Keep squirming. again with the hard questions um <laughs> no it's it's an understanding of just being where they are and the emotional investment that a competitor has in their piece. You know mm. what I mean? So um, you, you want to award ambition, especially when it's executed um, because we've, like I said, we've all, we've all done that before. Mm. Um, yeah, man. Anybody else want to add in on this? Andy, well, jump, in, <laughs> jump in on the ambition. So thing, that Andy, that's something that you, that's, yeah, that's something you that we, several times and to me we talked about, about that this. a lot yeah so so talk a little yeah. bit more about this idea of ambition and where it sits next to say execution so we look when we're when we're judging we're looking for uh merits in different areas and that can be creativity uh that can be the technical side of painting the basing and there's there's all these multiple angles you can go in from a miniature and we're looking for merits in those things when it was something like maybe a, a bronze in the master, maybe they only excelled in one area. Uh, maybe it was really well painted, but it wasn't particularly ambitious because it was a, a color. It was a, a model out of the box painted to the same color scheme out of the box, but it was super well done. And that's mm -hmm. probably where it's going to sit in, in like a bronze in the master because it excels in one area. But if you're doing a complex light situation, You've created a scene, a nice base, uh, telling story. You, you're going from multiple angles and um, you're doing it well. Then that's when they're going to push you all the way in, into a gold. But for me, I, I think, and I get this from conversations before, I think people have a, a you know, preconception that I put a lot of focus into technical painting when actually I don't. I'm looking... Um, more for impact uh, and people trying stuff and being successful uh, in that isn't necessarily being neat and tidy or things like that for certain elements then then maybe maybe being smooth and neat and tidy sells your effect more but if you're going for a certain type of look and feeling then it, it doesn't need to be like that so like will said we're looking for people to to execute their idea well no matter the style but certainly certain things can be more ambitious. And I think the uh, best of painting with Tebow and the Elder Banshee really shows that because he had one of the more ambitious lighting situations. And for people like um, me, Will and Dave, we, we really like that stuff. Uh, and just seeing playing with temperature, uh, playing with values, the composition of the, the colors throughout the piece. There's a lot of things that we, we look for. Um, and if you can see these multiple good things in a miniature, then yeah, it's going to take it all the way to the top. Um, and I think, I think there's things you can see in Tebow's Banshee that probably aren't across a lot of the other miniatures. Um, but you do have to, yeah, you do have to do these things, things well. I think to conclude what I'm saying is there's, there's multiple angles you can go at from a mini. Mm -hmm. So to do, to do really, really well in the show, you need to you basically show off multiple things and do them really really well 
Um, if you're slightly weaker in some areas, you're probably still going to get awarded if you're really good at one thing. But to go all the way to the top, then, uh, yeah, I think we're looking for a lot of positive things. But we did try to minimize um, judging from flaws. So we, we, we tried to go, this is really, really great, this thing but they haven't excelled in maybe that many other areas. It's just super clean painting. Or yeah. maybe the painting isn't clean at all, but this is such a good idea and we love it. So both can win and things like that. So I think you guys will agree with me on that, though. I, I, I totally do. I mean, the only time, he, in, um, like you said, with the more you know positive aspect of judging, not really looking at flaws, I think the only time that we did more so look at the flaws is when they were egregious or very outstanding to the point that it detracted from the well executed. Absolutely. Items. Yeah. Yeah. If a flaw, yeah, I think yeah, that's a really good point is we're trying not to judge on flaws, but if there's something that really holds a piece back, then, then you do have to do that. And then also some, account. and like Dave said, sometimes finding the level, I think going back to what you said, Henry, about what's our own experience on it. Um, I, I really think that, all the times I've lost has benefited me so much and thought about that and what we want this show to be and, and finding the balance of being encouraging and awarding people and celebrating people's stuff, but making it a worthwhile award is very, very difficult. And I think just, just while I say that now, I think we will discuss um, how to change certain things. Um, you know, maybe the inclusion of commended, maybe it's just displayed online somewhere. We will, we'll discuss the positives of this, the negatives between us, and we will always try and make it, um, yeah, nicer for people. So we will continue to work on that, but I am happy with the, the volume of awards we ended up giving because I think that, um, it sets a, a precedent for this, for this online show that we're going to do. Um, I think it's, I've won shows where I've not been proud of it because it's been too easy. And that's what I tried to, to do with this is I do want people to, to be proud of this, even if it's uh, just an online one, I still want that. So I guess that's where I came from mainly in the judging angle is I want people to be happy uh, and motivated to do better if they didn't win. Cause I've entered a lot of shows and lost a lot of times and uh, yeah, it just motivated me basically. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> well that's yeah i think that's very that's very very fair um so Dave was oh uh, go on mate i was about to ask you yeah, but go I, on. I was i was going to just add a few things to this and i'm probably opening the floodgates here um but <laughs> i don't mind if you got a medal don't or do it Dave. don't do it oh god don't say it dave don't say like <laughs> if you message me and ask <laughs> oh, oh, no. i'm happy to provide feedback <laughs> You can cut that out if you don't cut want him, to cut, cut him, him out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I, I, I love discussing this stuff uh, and I actually find that there's a lot of personal benefit to myself um, when I can look through and see what works and what doesn't. And so I can... It, it, it helps to clarify my own personal feedback loop and I, I'm, I'm quite harsh to myself so it's interesting to take that kind of harsher view towards other people's work because I like everything. I love minis so much. Um, and so, you know, my personal um, favourite thing in, in a mini is the focus and how well the artist has controlled where the viewer is going to look around the model. So I like to see if someone has um, used color or temperature or things like that uh, across the model to control where the eye wanders because I find that is a really important factor and, you know, that can come across probably more in photos, but uh, you can always see when it's there or not. Yeah. Um, and to do those sort of things, you've, you've often got to take a risk and we all know that when we're painting a model, it takes can take hundreds of hours to get something really good. You know, you're going to spend a lot of time on there. And before you start, you have no idea how it's going to turn out. And so taking a risk on a tricky idea and, and jumping and diving in, you might end up with rubbish at the end. And taking that risk has, you know, used up all that time. But 
if you do end up executing it, I think the one the the the, the pieces that have a higher amount of risk to begin with are the ones that are usually end up with that that wow factor and they're the ones that usually get elevated above above the rest because of the risk in the very beginning but it can be really daunting to take that risk because you don't want to waste a couple of hundred hours if you end up getting to the end and realize that it hasn't turned out but you can always tell always the pieces that have taken the most risk and they're usually the ones at the top of the pile i think um and it, it doesn't necessarily need to be a skill execution um you know there is merit to looking at something and seeing it, um, something executed really really well but it doesn't have to be perfectly executed if it's executed well enough or to the best of that person's abilities sometimes it stands out that they've done their best and taken that risk and and made something that's really good I, I, I it's not an example of risk necessarily but the um the best creative piece from roman um that that was up there in the discussion as one of the best pieces of, of the whole lot and we love that and and yeah. when you contrast yeah. that to the banshee it's a very different thing so how do you you know decide which is better between those like they're, they're completely opposite ends of the scale of miniatures i think but they're both damn awesome pieces um and that's the type of thing you know you can do anything with miniatures literally anything and show us stuff that we haven't seen before yeah <laughs> nice one i mean i I'd, I'd have you boys on to chat for for hours and hours and hours about all of this and i'm sure uh, the viewers of, of culture paint would would as well so i would love you both to come back on and talk about all of this but just to try and keep it on track and before Andy nods off on camera. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. <laughs> it's, well, it's, I'm used uh, to do, it. Do you know it's, it's, it's so incredibly motivating and exciting and inspirational listening to people talk about miniatures painting like this. Um, but tip time. Mm. Okay. You're going in. We can't do individual feedback unless we're Dave, in which oh. case contact him directly. Uh, all 1,807 of you, whatever it is, um, and you, you'll be fine. But top tips of We've already spoken about the importance of it's an online competition. Photos matter. So take photos a bit better. And we're now in a place where you go into onto YouTube and put miniature photography tips and stuff. There's umpteen videos on the subject now. Okay, you don't need incredible thousand tens of thousands of pounds cameras to get a decent photo of a, of a miniature anymore your phone will be good enough um, yeah right yeah. so if if the competition is an online competition you need to bear that sort of in mind so we, we've spoken about photos a little can bit I, can i pay you back on this can i talk cool. about that for just a minute go on okay so just like henry said this is an online competition the only thing we have to judge are your pictures um and for anybody that competed However much time and effort, as Dave just talked about, you know, sometimes we put hundreds of hours into a piece and a sloppy, quick photograph that the miniatures aren't in focus. We can't see all of that effort that's in. And if we can't see it and we can't determine the quality of the piece, we can't judge it. Um, so the level of care that you take to put into your miniatures, you should at least take that minimum amount of effort to get a picture that represents your work. Okay. It should look like your work looks in hand. Um, and this is just a personal anecdote for me that I'll add in here. I came across several pieces, um, in this competition that I had seen or I had previously judged at other competitions or whatnot. And I've, and I know their quality, but I, as a judge, I can't treat that any differently than another picture here that I haven't seen. So I have to go off of those photos and go what I see to get rid of that bias. And if your pictures are holding your work back, you are working against yourself. So it is really, really important for all of us painters to learn 
at least the minimum requisite photography skills. Even for me, like I, I hate taking pictures of my models. I do. I, I can't. It drives me crazy. I think I'm terrible at it, you know, but this is so much of this um, miniature com painting community is it, we're a very global community. You know, there's not that many places in the world where we have high concentrations of painters, except for, you know, the few shows, um, you know, I mean, here, me talking about here in the U.S., I mean, we may maybe have three like really big shows and we have to travel a really long time to get to get there. So most of the time that our work's being viewed, it's being viewed on the Internet and their are pictures. So you want to display your work um, so that it's representative of what it actually is. You know, it's it's so important for what we do. And that's my number one recommendation for all of this is if you're displaying your work online or in pictures or doing an online competition, you have to learn photography. Sorry if that was a little bit roundabout, but no, it's fair. It's very fair. You can have another tip as well. Don't worry. I think you're allowed. You're allowed <laughs> that's one. My you're, you're, tip. You're, you're allowed one more. That's, that's, <laughs> okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We've given you a bit of time to think about it, though. So, Dave, go. Okay. My tip is think about story and basing. I want to see a story. I want to see more than just a miniature uh, um and story ambience um and you know make me feel and understand what's going on really well more than just seeing a miniature and it's a it's a hard thing to capture and it's a hard thing to do and think about but that is my my main tip i think so it, it, it's up in the air, you know. How do you tell a story with a miniature? You've got quite limited amount of things to do, but if you can work on those sorts of things, think about the um, think about how to do them. You can use light, you can use things on the base, little details. Um, you can use color, temperature. Uh, there's a lot of things you can use, but try to find a way to tell a story. Nice, nice, right, Andy. I think I'll, I'll circle back to what I said earlier, and that's paint every part of the mini as good as you can, and that applies no matter your level. And if you're, yeah, if you're like just just started, or you you maybe um, not super confident, you can still do your best on every bit. And it's it's so clear when people haven't tried on certain areas, you can you can just see right through it. Um, so yeah, and I think. That's something I tell myself and it's something I've made massive mistakes on in the past and I might have painted one area of the miniature really well and there's other stuff where I lost interest or whatever, I couldn't be bothered and it's and it's meant I've not placed. It's happened to me so many times and I come into every project and try and give myself the time to do every part good and that's going to be a different um psychology thing depending on who you are as a person maybe you have to put a project down for two weeks a month at a time so you can come back do it well um just just you know no matter where you're at in your painting journey if you're doing one mini that's for a competition purposes don't focus on i should use this technique or i need to have non-metallic metal it's it's there's no tick list just do do everything as good as you can i think uh yeah i think that's it for me Nice, nice. Go on then, Will. You can have your second one. <laughs> Take better pictures. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Tri tripling down on that one. No, <laughs> Talking to yourself, um, Will. <laughs> just because, uh, yeah, no, they're they're taking all my good tips, all the good tips. They already mentioned it. Um, you talked to when we were judging. You talked about integration, um, and even though I was actually, said, I'm glad you said that. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to figure out how do I can, I can articulate this. Um, in, one of the things that I think really elevates a piece is the, the integration of all the aspects that go into it. Okay. So um, like Angie, Andy mentioned, you know, like technical versus basing versus storytelling or whatnot. When all of those pieces 
kind of merge together, you get something that is truly transcendent. And oftentimes that can elicit almost an emotional response. Like Dave's, Dave brought up earlier Roman's piece, the best of creative. Like I cannot express how much I absolutely loved this piece. Mm -hmm. Cause when I look at it, there's just something special that happens, something intangible that elevates it above everything else that makes it really, really special. And his, his color palette, the composition, um, the execution, everything works together. It works seamlessly. And that's what makes something really, really stand out. So I try to liken it to, so maybe you're starting off in your painting journey, right? And you're learning different techniques. So you learn how to dry brush first and then wash, and then you learn how to layer all these different aspects of physical techniques of painting. As you start to progress, you start to learn more of these concept conceptual things uh, because you've mastered the physical. So once you start to learn these concepts, you use your physical, you know, technical knowledge to kind of put that together. And that shows maturity as a painter as well. So the more the more you progress, the more masterful you are is it's dictated by how well you can put all these things together. So work on that. That's the ambition. <laughs> That's the ambition thing, right? Paint good. Um, it. Okay, right. Yes, yeah, I will. Thank just, you. And I can just add something good. to that as well. Um, integration. Yeah. There, there are a lot of pieces that stand out to me that had tufts added. So like, you know, tufts of grass, and they're just taken out of the box and stuck onto the model. Now, all you need to do is paint them to integrate them into the scene, give them a bit of ambience to match things. But if, if you're going to stick a tuft on, it needs to fit properly with the scene. Um, mm -hmm. If it's not quite there, you can just put a bit of paint on the tuft. And uh, I think a, a lot of pieces might have been elevated if they had have done that. And sometimes less is more. Maybe you mm -hmm. don't need a tuft. Well, look yep. at the golden single, and right? The crew has There's a, nothing just, there. Just a flat, it was perfect. Just a flat green. Um, and that's, all, that's just... all it needed. That's all it needed. It just the ambiance and the palette, everything fit. It was integrated. It worked. It didn't have to be complex. Um, so yeah. I just um, want to underline. Go ahead. Sorry, mate. So no, 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 I, no, no, I just wanted to underline both of your points because um, I think you're both talking about uh, things, but you you have to plan the base from the start. Don't finish your miniature, then do the base. Uh, you know, plan what the base is going to be. Make sure it, it looks cool. Add story, and it's going to be integrated because the paint's all going to match. So, yeah, mm -hmm. the base isn't an afterthought. It's part of your presentation. Lately, when I've you paint the two separate, the base. sorry. As I was going to say, when you paint the two separately with separate thoughts, and you put them together, they still look separate, and it's not integrated. Yeah. So go ahead, Dave. And lately, I've been thinking personally about um, basing ideas that models will fit on um, rather than models first and then the basing. So I, I know basing is a, a weak area for me, so I'm really want to try and work on that. But that, that's something I think that is a good good tip is to try and think about some some basing or base ideas first. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. And experiment with other materials. Like you said, there are a lot of bases that just use some tufts. You know, there's so many different materials that you can use to replicate different things. And it's, it can be, it can be really fun, you know, um, to experiment with uh, new materials or new bits, natural stuff, non natural stuff. Maybe try sculpting some of your own for, you know, rocks instead of like cork. I mean, get some um, milliput and, or some green stuff or some polymer clay. It's probably my, my go-to is just Sculpey. Um, and you can control a lot with those other types of skills. And then, you know, talking about integration, you know, when you have that forward thought about what you want to create, you can make a piece that's much more coherent and more transcendent. Well, Perfect. those were splendid tips so yeah i think we can definitely we can definitely work uh, work with all of that um guys i think let's wrap it up 
uh, on this one because I say, otherwise it's going to be hours and hours and hours of chatting. It feels um, like we've barely scratched the surface <laughs> I know, of the thing. It really, really about. does. I feel horrible <laughs> doing this, but I also like, come on, yeah. get, this, get this slick and then we can 100% get you guys back on to talk about it a little bit more. Um, we can go for think, another four hours of Andy. Yeah, right. Easy, up. easy, right? <laughs> um, not so easy. And I'm seeing and I'm seeing Matt nodding off as well here. So like, yeah, we need to, <laughs> and that's nothing to do with the discussion. Okay, um, but yeah, I think I would Long just like to you say uh, a massive, massive thank you to both of you uh, for doing this, um, uh, guys. We we asked Dave and Will to help judge, not just because they're mates, but because they are what we want the scene to be like. They are they are people in the scene that we admire not just because of their painting, but because of their attitude towards things. The whole point of the NPO, the whole point of cult and all this is to be a large community of painters. And Dave and Will both exemplify this. No one's been paid to do any of this. All of this is people's free time that they've given up um, to do it because they enjoy doing it and because they enjoy building the community, strengthening the community uh, and all the rest of it. So huge, huge thank you uh, to both of you for that. Obviously to Andy for for head judging and partner in criming and all the rest of it um i think you seem pretty relaxed actually there wasn't too many like oh my god dave wants to do a million bronzes what the fuck? like this it was all pretty relaxed it was all like pretty on, on on the level pretty which is which is nice nice to see it means we must have been doing uh, must have been doing something right with it as well um also i've mentioned it already matt you're a legend it's awesome um, I know we've got improvements we want to do for the next one, um, and, and that just know, be small we'll, tuning yeah, things. Exactly right. This is this is this is definitely definitely the start um, uh, of something big. A huge thank you, obviously, to all you competitors, everybody that entered. It's not a competition without you doing it, um, and we were slightly overwhelmed by the volume of you uh, that did it. But hopefully, you know, just we'll get, get even more. Right? You know, we'll. That's on us to figure out how we can cope uh, with that many. Uh, and possibly more, more judges. More, Love yeah, it. Next Love time, it. Right. <laughs> um, and lastly, viewers in general, people that supported Colt um, the last few years, uh, particularly culture of paint side of things, you know, we wouldn't be pushing ourselves to go and try and do these things if it wasn't for you guys sort of supporting us. So, you know, the likes, the subscribes, the shares, all the usual stuff um, that you hear a lot of people talk about really does make a huge difference for tiny little niche things like our sort of mega nerd painting level uh, of, of, of hobby uh, and all the rest of it. So that is the end of the online competition for 2023, the Miniature Painting Open. But we're very, very excited to announce that next year, 2024, as well as there being an MPO online, same time next year, online, all the same kind of thing, we're also going to be putting on our first big in-person show, the Miniature Painting Open Bristol. Uh, it is a city very close to us. It's a amazing location. We found a wonderful venue to do it, and it will be a traditional open style miniature painting competition tickets are going to go on sale for that in january we're going to be talking a lot more about it over the next sort of few weeks uh, so all the information will be out there on our, our usual social uh, media places and whatnot the date is may the 18th and may the 19th 2024 so that's a saturday and a sunday bang in the middle of bristol well near enough the middle of bristol right next to the train station we're hoping to see as many of you there as possible. It is a ticketed event. There is a hard limit on the number of people uh, that we can get in the building safely. Um, so, yeah, pretty nervous, not going to lie. We've, uh, we've, we've wanted to do this for a long time. Yeah. We're ready. Um, it's all part of, of what you guys have enabled us to, to, to go ahead and do. So we're going to talk about this an awful lot more, i say, over the next few weeks and over the next few months leading up to it. But save the date. Bristol, May 18th, May 19th, 2024. Hopefully, we will see you there. So from me, Matt, Dave, Will, and Andy, thanks, everybody. You're awesome. Take care. We'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Congrats. Amazing work. Right. Well done. Loved it. Bronze is for everyone. <laughs> bronze, bronze, bronze. You get a bronze. You get a bronze. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs>